welcome back everyone to another video and we've had a fair share of raspberry pi clones or single board computers as they are called now a lot of them have been from very cheap manufacturers like the banana pi the orange pi and so on and so forth and i've featured quite a few of them on my channel now there have been specifically some very powerful one like the upboard but then again from a small manufacturer or a small company who designed them and developed them and then marketed them but we've never had one from a proper PC manufacturer and things are looking different now. Uh, so I have the banana pie here and I have the raspberry pie here. But, but what I have on my screen is the Asus Tinkerboard. Now till now it is just a rumor even if these things exist. So the existence of this thing is between maybe and maybe not possibly. But the thing is that it would be a nice change in the industry of single board computers since there are quite a few expensive ones uh, like Intel Joule but that is for extreme professionals and not really people who have started at DIY and want to do some GPIO programming as well as have a stable and a powerful single board computer possibly the one based on an ARM processor but again as I said things are about to change there has been a leaked uh, slide with the topic called Asus Tinkerboard. Now this is the only evidence we have so far. It is something based on rock chip. So I'll just start the slide st straight away and we'll go through the things about the Asus Tinkerboard and what I think is great about it and so on and so forth. So let's get started. So first of all, we have the Asus Tinkerboard. Next up is some basic design concept, which is for education, for maker and for IoT applications. Everyone is doing that. Everyone is saying, but on the interesting thing, we have this image. Now this image signifies many things. Now let's see if I can actually zoom into it or not, but, uh, I'll zoom in uh, in post. Uh, what we see here is this particular board has the exactly the same layout as that of a Raspberry Pi 3. So I have one here right here and you can see it is damn close to what an actual Raspberry Pi 3 looks like. Um, the placement as far as I can tell are also exactly the same from the camera and the display inputs to the USB ports, the HDMI port and everything else in between. So there are a few things that I noticed straight away and one thing that really catches my mind is this GPIO header. Now it is color coded. Great stuff. I mean, you have your red pins uh, for, you know, uh, 5 volts, your yellow pins for 3.3 volts, green pins are GPIO and black pins are ground. So this is really nice for some quick tinkering and stuff like that. So I think this is a great idea. I think we also have some blue pins for the EEP ROM uh, pins that are not to be touched. Um, great. So what else we have on board? We have our rock chip uh, main CPU, which we'll get into a bit more uh, detail later on. And we have our Wi-Fi uh, module. Now, one thing I don't really understand, even on something like the Banana Pi, we have a really big Wi-Fi chip. But on the Raspberry Pi, it's, it's just a simple tiny chip at the back. I can barely even see that. And it's, I guess this is the one. It's right there at the back. If you guys can see good for you but yeah i mean yeah i mean that's a big chip but it does have an external antenna from what i can tell right there uh also we have our big power management ic so that means if it is properly programmed and in the device tree we can actually take um values like current usage voltages at different areas uh and you know stuff like that uh seems to be powered with a usb uh board like the raspberry pi 3 not my favorite thing but if they can manage with a little bit less current uh, good uh, then we have a dedicated audio chip seems like the um what's this company called i always tend to forget um real tech yeah the real tech audio chip and the real tech lan chip both are present probably gigabyte uh, because everyone is doing that and it's really cheap now uh, and then we have a separate USB control as far as I can tell and that seems to be the RAM seems to be at the back of the board So let's go ahead forward and take a look at a couple more things. This is just a crap slide here. We have a bit more 
uh, you know details detailed stuff so we have a rock chip 3288 arm a17 quad cores these are old quad cores and that's a old chip but um i don't know how accurate this slide is and what would be in the final product even if there is a final product and we'll get into a bit of this looks like another board very precisely like another board and we'll see what that is we have the 40 pin gpio headers and as i said these are color coded so uh the blue pen seems to be for i squared c which is really nice because those are the most commonly used communication port on the gpio so that's cool i guess 4k hdmi output so i'm thinking more like uh mali mp4 i don't know what they are actually using uh, let's see if the document has something on that um no it just says 4k h264 uh nothing on the gpu um let's just see uh mali mali okay so we have mali uh t764 gpu so i think we should have open source drivers for that with support for open gl es3 so i guess that is cool enough uh, let's go back to the slide 3.5 mm audio jack and gigabit ethernet as i said only usb 2 ports not a usb 3 but again not a big difference just a small single board computer uh, dsp and uh, csi uh, dsi and csi interfaces power in jack is through usb as i said so again couple of os's that it can run that's completely bogus it will run android as far as i can tell and then there's wnn Code is just a software that it would run, of course. So moving on to the next slide, uh, here's something a bit more in detail. Yes, they have confirmed it as T764 GPU, OpenCL and OpenVG supported hardware, uh, OpenCL and OpenVG. That is something really nice. Uh, dual channel LP DDR3 RAM for two gigabytes. That's, I guess, more than enough. Uh, hand, uh, thumbs up for uh, two gigabytes of ram and then there are a couple of ports now surprisingly the power requirement is only five volts and two amp i guess i guess that's because of the older processor so they are um you know to maintain the usb form factor they are actually uh, may, they might have made that decision of getting a low powered and older core that requires less power and this is sort of a comparison of course this is not really based on anything else but this slide specifically mentions a mentions asus tinkerboard now let's get to the part where it says asus and why it's not that big of a surprise so if you guys do remember the upboard the upboard is manufactured by someone called eon technologies now uh, i don't know if this is the proper spelling yeah so parent organization on wikipedia it does say asus associate company of asus and in somewhere in parent organization it would be saying asus as well and of course an asus company it's right there so yes asus kind of has some hand in the upboard uh but that's about it so it's not big of a surprise that they might be spinning off their own development board uh again the audio is 192 kbps uh, kilobytes uh, 24 bit which is great and more than enough for anything else uh, so again some performance benchmarks but that would only be meaningful once someone gets a review unit and tests them which i think would be a long time it will take a long time since you know there this is just the only thing we have on this particular board uh, and then some storage benchmarks and how to get it started blah 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 a bit closer look at it and that's about it nothing more so i said it looks like another board and that happens to be the mars board rock chip or, or as far as i can remember it wasn't a mars board it was miqi's own board miqi is another company which I don't know how they are doing right now i've never heard of them really but uh see how closely relatable the board is with uh the asus tinker board i'll just pull it out here there's a good picture and 
let's zoom in so this is the ASUS stringer board and this is the mark mars uh what is it rocket uh, rock chip board or something like that and uh, they actually have a few same similar components just uh, less uh, absolutely no gpi or no one that this board never picked up and um yeah this board never really came into existence it was with rk3288 which is the exactly same cpu uh, that has been seen in the asus tinker board show so it can be an iteration of this particular board but um for now this asus board is just a rumor then more there should be some prototype available in the world uh, or some working prototype with this particular layout but as for now nothing is confirmed and i am actually really looking forward for the launch of this particular board because this is from if asus launches it on their own this is from a bigger company and a more reputed company and it will have some sort of community and software support now with things like but the banana pie the software support is absolutely terrible uh and i mean i couldn't get the gpu driver to work at all i mean i don't care if it's a mp400 it's a shit gpu but at least they have give us the drivers uh with the raspberry pi i mean you know you are paying less for without a gpu driver but there is active community support on open source gpu driver which is a lot of a lot to be honest but they and they do have great support the board works flawlessly i mean the official operating system for the banana pie does not work at all uh so that's about it i guess a little bit of rant on other boards and you know um pretty excited for this board and to see how they pull it off uh, and i'll leave uh, you guys with here so thank you so much for watching like this video if you do like it dislike it if you don't like it and click the subscribe button i will see you all in the next one